everybody, and welcome to the Commander Pod, your Magic the Gathering podcast for all things Commander. I'm Kelson Howell. And I'm Spencer Simpson. We really wanted to do an episode on which commanders have decks or strategies that can perform really well without the commander. <laughs> and what we realized is, as we were planning for this episode, is that just about every deck can do this, but it just tends to turn into like an X color good stuff pile. So what we wanted to talk about this week is how you can make your deck perform without its commander, but also avoid just building you know good stuff in whatever colors you're playing. Yeah, I found that it when I've tried to just build decks that are super commander independent, it loses a little bit of the flavor for me personally. I like decks. I've I've kind of come to a point in my deck building where I really enjoy decks that are com- commander dependent. I think it's very fun. I think they synergize very well. They have a lot of interesting theme and flavors. Um, and and if I kind of swing the opposite way and try and make something that's too commander independent, then it feels like I'm playing a lot of the same cards because they turn into good stuff piles. And if you're just playing good stuff pile, you should just play all the best stuff in that pile. <laughs> so I've, I found that it feels very samey for me. So I do, I do like playing very commander dependent decks, but there are some pitfalls if you build very commander dependent decks. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, good stuff files at the end of the day just feel kind of, um, unfun. I don't know. I like there, there's just building around a theme and having a, th- a specific thing that your deck wants to do is really fun. And so if you're just including all the best stuff, then yeah. let's play CDH and include all the best stuff or very, very high power or whatever. Okay. I was actually going to ask about this. This isn't on the script and I haven't played enough CEDH to speak to this. And so I wanted to ask you from your experience, is that a big difference between casual and CEDH? Like CEDH, as I understand it, is just less thematic. Like you're, you're not, you're building around your commanders in a way that take advantage of the abilities, usually like an engine, right? Or some sort of a combo piece in the command zone. But the rest of the deck doesn't like play to that theme, right? Yeah, I mean, I think so. The only frame of reference that I really have for that is the deck that I was playing a lot in CDH, which was Tassiker, the Golden Fang. Mm -hmm. And it's a Sultai deck, and so it plays all of the best Sultai stuff, like Counter Spells, right? And, And... uh, some decks that play ad nauseum and stuff like that. But because mm-hmm. of Tasker's mana value and the unique uh, ability he has of Delve, right? At least in CDH. I don't know if there's any other commanders that have Delve as part of their um, mm. mana cost. Is that you're typically leaning into a pod strategy, right? Where you're trying to pod gotcha. something. Or you're like sac- you're doing like sacrifice to be able to cast a peer into the abyss or something like that, right? So... Uh, I didn't... I really like Tasker. I think he's really cool. I think he's pretty cool for like high power casual or like fringe cdh and so Mm. i was like thinking about switching to maybe i still like sultai and i wanted to give sultai a shot so i thought about oh well let me just try playing um i think they called it like tentacle sushi at the time or something like that it's um (laughs) uh tevish and thrasios so it's the same colors right but it's but it's got thrasios which is a really good infinite combo outlet in the command zone which which uh Tassiger also is, right? Like, that's part of what sure. you're trying to do with that. But you also have Tevish Zot in the command zone. Um, and this was back when, like, Jeweled Lotus and Mana Crypt were in the format, which made Tevish Zot a lot better. In lot any better, case, yeah. it's the same colors, and you're playing, like, 95% of the same stuff. But maybe, like, five cards change because you're not playing the pod, the pod package stuff. and you're not yeah. playing, right? And a lot of green Which decks is probably still play, better. Like, that's probably more powerful, right? Right, exactly. You'll still play, yeah. like, Eldritch Evolution because, like... Uh, it's a powerful tutor for you know. And Eldritch Evolution is X or less, right? Uh, X like or less, and it's two and it's two plus. So it's like yeah, super super flexible. It's, it's like good. a great card. So like four or five cards really is all you're going to change out because the rest of it is like your interaction suite and like your win conditions, which aren't going to vary necessarily in those colors. And so I do think as you are playing good stuff piles in specific colors, you do lose. Like obviously, uh, Tassiger had some identity, right? The identity was I'm playing Pod and I'm playing. Uh, I'm playing sacrifice stuff. I'm abusing Tassiger's uh, mana value and delve, but mm. it's um, but it was still pretty ubiquitous, right? That's like a very sure. small percentage of your deck that you're changing between two commanders, even like two sets of commanders. Yeah, interesting. So, so even though even though Tasker had a theme of pod, it was still mostly the same as the rest of the meta in those colors because those are just the best things to play. So it kind of in a way turned into a good stuff pile. Which yeah. is fine. That's how that format works. 
Yeah, for sure. And and that's and again, that's CEDH, but even still, like it, it's not ubiquitous. So we're not trying to say like if you're playing in certain colors and you're playing good stuff piles, like you're going all the decks are going to look the same because that's not true because sure. you're still going to be playing no. within a theme. But I think the idea is is we want to push ourselves even further into theme and away from just like we still play the best version of effects especially if you're playing a more powerful version of your deck right like the more yeah, powerful as you, you get, go up in power yeah you're playing less thematic versions of specific effects right but yep uh we're still playing casual and so we want to lean in the into the thematic as much as reasonable for whatever power level we're playing at awesome thank you thank you for providing some some insight into the world sure. of cedh i appreciate that so let's talk a little bit about commander dependence first of all having a deck that is very commander dependent isn't a problem like we just said we actually like how that plays we like how thematic it is it's very fun very casual it just means that your deck is very vulnerable to having your commander removed and and it can slow down considerably if that happens and that's just a risk that comes with having a very commander dependent deck yeah, if you rely on your commander enough and your commander gets removed, you can come to a screeching halt because, oh no, everything <laughs> I was doing was uh, built around my commander, right? And that's yep. like part of the fun of commander is building around a commander, right? And and Or like building a commander around a specific strategy. But it's, um, I think what when a problem arises is when a deck becomes uh, too commander dependent. And again, that's not really a problem. We think commander, de- commander dependent decks are fun. But uh, your deck, I think, gets more and more commander dependent as your deck synergizes with your commander more than it synergizes with itself, right? If everything is built around mm-hmm. making your commander do something and your commander goes away, then you have all of these individual pieces that are operating separately with the linchpin of your commander making them work, right? And so, yeah. uh, and I think that's when things become very, very commander dependent. Definitely. And that it is a spectrum. And the closer you move towards just simply synergizing with your commander, the more dependent it comes and the more you have to watch out for it and the more you have to plan around it because you don't want to put yourself in a position where your game does just come to a halt. So it also compounds with the themes that you include to synergize with your commander. And you put a really good example in here. So you have a Sadisi Brood Tyrant deck, and that's a commander that you enjoy playing. What's interesting about Sadisi Brood Tyrant and a lot of commanders in Casual Commander is they care about a lot of things. We use that term care about to talk about all the different themes and strategies and cards that uh, synergize with, with a com- in this case, a commander. And so Sadisi just cares about a lot of things. What are some of the things that your Sadisi deck cares about? Yeah, so, I mean, I'll read CDC really quickly, and it, and I think when you we're talking about something that a commander cares about, it's the words that, like, pop out to you as you're reading their text, right? Sure. So, and so I'll, I'll read it really quick. CDC Brew Tyrant is one black, green, blue for a 3-3 legendary creature, Naga Shaman. And uh, she says, whenever Sidisi Brood Tyrant enters the battlefield or attacks, mill three cards. So there we have like three things, right, that we could even <laughs> yeah. latch on to. Entering, attacking, and then you mill, right? You yep. mill three cards. And then in the next paragraph, we have whenever one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard from your library, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. So then mm. we're like, okay, we need to have a lot of creatures, and we're creating yep. zombies. And so with just... And we so, care about putting things in your graveyard. And we care about putting things in our graveyard. So with yep. just... In CDC, we have potentially enter the battlefield stuff, attacking, uh, self mill, zombies, right? There's a lot of different creature tokens. Creature, to- like, yeah, creature tokens. Yeah. There's a lot of different axes that we could build CDC around. And uh, like we were saying, the, the more uh, we're talking about how uh, s- synergizing specifically with the commander makes your deck synergize with itself less. And I think this is a really good example of that, where if I said, cool, she makes zombies. I want to put in stuff that supports zombies. Oh, she rewards, like, she does self-mill. I want to put in a bunch of stuff that also gets paid yeah. off for self-mill. You could also just put a bunch of blink stuff in because she has an ETB ability. So you're like, I'm right. going to put in all the blink stuff. Yeah. yeah, right, exactly. And then it, as I'm adding all of these different things that I make, that I think are cool about Sidisi, it starts to muddy the waters in my 99. And again, I think... Uh, the linchpin is the way to think about it. Or like if you're building like an arch and you have like the stone at the top, right? Like yeah. you take Sidisi out of the equation and your strategy just crumbles, right? Yeah, because else- they're not synergizing with themselves. Like there's nothing uh, uh, like blink and creature tokens actually are a non-bow. Those don't right. work together very well. So it's like the more very the themes are, even if they connect to your commander, they're not going to work well with each other. Yeah, exactly. And again, that's not like a bad thing, but it but um 
But I think there's a better way to go about building a commander dependent deck because we do like to, like, part of what's fun about it is finding a commander, saying, that is so cool. I love the CDC makes these zombie tokens whenever I mill or, and, and I make, or I love the CDC makes me mill myself. But I think we have, I think part of, uh, trying to get your commander deck to perform well, even if your commander gets removed within that theme, is kind of narrowing a little bit. We did an episode on that. We did an entire episode on yeah. narrowing, your, narrowing focus. your focus. And I think, and I, this, I don't want this to be like a redux of that episode necessarily, but I do think it's, uh, it, you should go check that one out. It's, we yeah, talk about some it. of the similar, yeah, some of the similar things in here. Yeah, but you mentioned one thing right there that I do want to hit on. You said, like, sometimes we just see a commander that we think is so cool and we want to build around it. So if you see Sadisi and you're like, oh, look at all the cool things Sadisi does. I want to build around it. That's totally cool. That's that's a way that you end up with a commander-dependent deck, but that's okay. Like, if, if you think the commander's cool, just build around it. I think that's yeah. awesome. You actually uh, had uh, an experience recently helping a friend build a deck right where that those strategies that that deck wants to play are just pretty commander dependent and there's really not much getting around that yeah it was um a, do you mind if i share a little bit about it it's no, lord please. of pain is what is what Great. they wanted to build to the lord of pain one? yeah please go ahead I do love this card because I it's love cool. the Valgavoth precon. I think it's so cool. And this is a great alternate commander for the deck. Lord of Pain is three black red for a 5-5 five, five legendary creature human assassin. I think it's funny that it's a human assassin because, like, you don't actually... I mean, you see a giant hand. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't seem very human. The art doesn't match up with the type line for me. Uh, it has menace. It has your opponents can't gain life. And whenever a player casts their first spell each turn, choose another target player. The Lord of Pain deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to the chosen player. Yeah, so when we were working on this deck together, they wanted to build it as like a high mid power deck. And mm. there's no... The interesting thing about the Lord of Pain is there's no clear like direction of the Lord of Pain wants, quote unquote, you to play like this, right? The, all it is is... Hey, everyone's going to lose life when they cast spells. So ideally, we want to be casting big spells, right? Sure. Yeah. And so yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So like some of the things you want to play are like one that we actually found the other day was like pyrokinesis. It's four mm. red red. Here, I'll read pyrokinesis. Um, so this is a little bit of tangent, but I was actually happy that we found this one. Four red red for an instant. You can exile a red card from your hand rather than pay its mana cost, and then it deals ah, four sweet. damage to bodies you choose among any number of targets. And part of what makes that really cool is it's still a six mana value spell. So it triggers mm. Lord of Pain. You get to do six damage to any target, and you can do an additional four da or to, to any opponent, right, with the Lord of Pain, and then four damage spread otherwise. So that's for exiling another red card from your hand. That's ten damage yeah. to a, a but player if you that's want. That's not an effect that you would want to play in every red deck. Like it's not no. particularly efficient, but it's very and so it's very c commander dependent. If Lord of Pain was removed, you would not want to cast that spell because you wouldn't be getting the payoff of running that less efficient spell. Right, exactly. And it's not good if Lord of Pain's not out, right? Like, it's two cards to deal four damage. And so yeah. uh, what I've realized over the course of working on this deck with them is that it's is Lord of Pain is just super, super commander dependent. And I think that's just inherently true for some commanders. Like, yeah. you could build Lord of Pain in a way that wasn't commander dependent, but then you're just building, like, generous Racto generic Rakdos good stuff, right? Because sure. then Lord of Pain's, like, yeah. incidental value in the command zone, basically. It's kind of like a Rakdos spell slinger deck, where it's like, you want to make sure that you are casting a spell each turn. And that chip damage probably gets through but you're this is like your main win con it makes you want to play big spells instead yes. of just doing like the regular racto spell slinger thing where you're just trying to like storm off kind of yeah and and what you could do is just like put in a bunch of really good generically good big red spells right but i yep. think then it's a um, good stuff pile <laughs> but, but it's a good stuff pile right you're just playing racto's good stuff and so it, i think there's just some commanders that's that say hey if you want to build around this commander uh you kind of are all in on building around this commander and you need to keep the commander alive because it's you're not going to get any benefit otherwise. Totally. All right. That's, a gr that's great. I like this commander a lot. I'd love to see that deck list. I haven't taken a look at it yet. Uh, so if your deck is commander dependent, you do have a couple of options. There are some things that you need to keep in mind. You can just say, you know what? I love this deck the way it is. It's okay if my commander gets removed. Uh just don't worry about it and just be yeah. just accept the fact that you're a little more vulnerable. I think this fits into a lower power environment a lot better. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, part of what we want to do this episode is prescribe solutions, right? Yeah. And one of the potential solutions is don't do anything. If don't you love anything. it, oh. do it. And you're right. It, I think it does fit into lower power levels really well because you're vulnerable. Your deck's vulnerable to, to being stopped. And it uh, and, and there's just less uh, interaction at lower yeah. power levels. Yeah. Less interaction going around. And, and I think a lot of decks tend to be pretty vulnerable at, at those tables, right? And so that's, yeah. that's one way to go about it. The way that we've tried to go about it more recently is that we've tried to lean into it pretty heavily. And mm. that looks like adding more protection, right? A lot of our interaction suite has turned into... And, and maybe I've... I think sometimes I've swung the wrong way on this because I have found that I sometimes don't have enough interaction for the table after. Uh, sure. But we just... Our, our, the ratio of our interaction that is protection to removal starts to be bloated with protection a lot more if, if our commander... Or if our deck is very commander-dependent. Sure. And and that probably also relies pretty heavily on like the play pattern for that commander. If you're like a very fast, aggressive commander and you can try and close out the game quickly, then that's probably okay for like to have more of your interaction just be protection. But in general, I do think that you and I have both started adding a lot more protection in our decks to keep those commanders around. Uh and doing doing that I one thing I like about that though, in some ways it lets you focus more on your fun strategy mm. in like kind of like staying in your lane where you're like, Hey, I'm just over here doing my thing. You're over there doing your thing. Like if anything gets too out of hand, we do have things in our deck that can take care of it. But like it puts more of the focus on letting your deck do the thing instead of worrying too much about everybody else's decks doing the thing. Yeah, it makes you a little more proactive, weirdly, mm-hmm. and like, and still reactive if someone's like removing your stuff. And I think it makes you way more judicious with your removal. Like, yeah. So uh, my Tana Tevish deck is like super, super commander dependent, and I've leaned into it by adding protection, but also by adding in a lot of stuff that like specifically Tana cares about, right? Like a lot yeah. of the haste enablers and a lot of the stuff that buffs Tana and stuff like that. Like, it's it's goes pretty hard on keeping Tana alive. And I played a game with it the other day where I just like was throwing removal around because I had a couple of removal pieces and I mm. had floating mana. And then mm. late in the game, one of our buddies played like moat or something like that, right? <laughs> or no, it was moat yeah. specifically. And so yeah. no, no creatures, only creatures with flying could attack, I think is what yeah. moat says. And I was like, well, crap. Like I, <laughs> and so when you do run more protection like that, you do, like you, I, you do have to be way more judicious, right? With your removal yeah. and you get to sit back and say, Hey, this is, I'm doing my game plan. Someone can try to stop me and I'm only going to use my removal on stuff that will for sure stop me from like doing my game plan. Right. Yeah. And I, I don't think that every deck is going to benefit from changing its interaction package this way. This has just worked really well with our play group and our local meta that uh, people have enjoyed playing these types of games, and that's just kind of the way that those games have swung. And that's great. And your pod may look different. Your pod may need 10 counter spells in every deck to <laughs> sure. keep it going. Yeah, yeah and, and that varies at power levels. And I th- I would say, like, if your pod is, like, more interaction heavy and is running, like, bigger threats, I don't think it needs to be a change in, like, distribution of interaction. You could just add more. Like, remove some, like, yeah. worse, like some of the worst stuff in your deck put in more interaction in the form of protection, right? And still and still play your removal and stuff. I, I think but I think the important thing is is like, yeah, if if your deck is commander dependent and you want it to perform better, just like say, cool, lean into it and we're going all in Protect on this. That com- commander. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean we talked that's about great. lightning greaves and swivel boots, right? Like that's this is exactly when you'd want to do that is when you is when you have that yeah. sort of stuff going on. Yeah, great call. So the third option for the third solution for how you can adapt to a commander dependent deck is to potentially reevaluate and and make your <laughs> deck less commander dependent. If it, if it's just not working out, if if it's your game plan is just falling apart every time you play it because your commander keeps getting removed and you're not having fun with it and you want your deck to be able to do better without the commander, you can do that. <laughs> you can change your deck to run better that way. Yeah, and uh, again, the goal of this episode is to do that while not also drifting so far into this yeah. is my commander, but my deck is a good stuff pile doing something entirely different. Totally. And this is just we like the s- face We still commander. want to avoid good stuff piles. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think um, what has helped us do this a lot is that um, we aren't like building a deck of like, hey, this is like the stuff I want to be doing. And then like, switching through commanders like i've seen people do this before where they say like oh i want to build a deck that like 
is around this strategy and the commander doesn't really matter, right? They will like yeah. say, I'm building a blue-black deck. Here are my all of my different options. Because I think... Uh, p- part of you do want your deck to synergize to some degree with your commander, right? It's just that uh, it's just that y- your commander is the is probably the best option for doing a specific thing, right? Like, yeah, if it's an eighth, it's the eighth card in your hand, and it's yeah, guaranteed exactly. every game. Of course, you want to build around that. That's going to give you the greatest advantage in the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, if you are just building a deck and saying, oh, "I don't care," the deck is in these colors. What are the what are my options? Like, mm-hmm. you're going to end up having what is kind of a good stuff pile, right? Like yeah. is, or, or at least a, a moving <laughs> moving too far in the wrong direction, maybe not towards good stuff pile, but towards like, oh, my deck doesn't care about my commander at all. It's just, I just sure. needed a commander because that's the format I'm yeah. playing. It, it is going to play a little less consistently as well if you do that, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So how do you make your deck less commander dependent? Uh Pick a theme and stick to it. We kind of mentioned that earlier. It's it's important to narrow your focus because this will help your deck synergize with itself. Uh, if everything in your deck cares about milling, <laughs> and if you if you were to, to build your Sadisi deck as a mill deck and everything in your deck cared about milling, then it's going to generally synergize well with each other because they all care about the same thing instead of them all caring about your commander but not necessarily the same strategy. Yeah, and, and I don't think that means that you need to move entirely away from sub-themes, but I think you need to be really mm-hmm. judicious about it, right? Because, yeah. again, as you get this spiderweb network of sub-themes, like, n- things are going to synergize with each other less. And so, clearly, one is, like, the best spot to be, right? Like, And that's, I think, why typal decks do so well, is because, mm-hmm. like... You're playing elves, and most elves care about other elves. And if they don't care about yeah. other elves, they are an don't, elf. Don't put it in your deck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> or, or they like, or the other elves care about them, right? Yes. Like, whereas sure. if if I'm doing discard and I'm also doing, I don't know, like burn or something. Like, I don't know. That's a dumb thing. I might have something that cares about non combat damage, and then another thing that's like cool, whenever you discard a card and those are not going to like line up together in the same way that an elf that removes an enchantment is still an elf, right? Reclamation Sage is an elf. And so it's going to, it's going to synergize with, with the theme of elves. Sorry. I'm, I don't want to be hitting this too hard, but I do think like (laughs) it's, I do think that's important, right? That you, that when you, that your 99 synergizing with each other is going to help you be the best thing that helps you. I think with that. Yeah. So the, the the fewer sub themes that you have, the more your deck is going to synergize with itself. The night the more your ninety nine are going to synergize with each other. And once again, that's not to say don't play sub themes. We all love sub themes. They they add some variety to your deck. If you're playing your deck a lot, if you have like one commander deck and you play it all the time, it could get very boring if it had like one very linear theme. Yeah. So I do think sub themes are really great. Um, but I do think it is important to have a main theme. Narrow it down. Don't include too many sub themes. Yeah, I mean, so like uh, I talked about Tana Tevish, right? Tana Tevish is an interesting uh, example, I think, because one of the main themes is like get Tana big, attack with Tana, right? But Tana creates saprlings, and so that one of the sub things of the deck is saprlings, and then another sub theme is like sacrifice. <laughs> but those are all like so closely tied together, and the sacrifice sure. is really only Tevish who's in the command zone, and so it's with partners actually you kind of have it good if you can if if one partner can do something that the other partner wants. It's it's that is sweet because you could look at your opening hand and be like, is this which partner yeah. cares most about what I have in my opening hand, and then you yeah. can play that partner first and kind of play around that strategy. That's I haven't thought about that. That's a really good point. Yeah, me either. Actually, I never really thought about which <laughs> that. Be, I, and I think mostly because the partners that I've thought about or or built are either just like val like or seen are just like value partners. Like yeah, like Thrasios Timna. I've not built a Thrasios Timna deck, but those are just like yeah. you're not going to have a hand that's like which one do I care about? I mean, you probably yeah. do. Because you're playing, high I, power I think I only have deck. one partner deck, and it's like my <laughs> storm combo deck. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. And so you're like, I'm not playing breaches. Malcolm, Malcolm's coming out. <laughs> breaches always. is for colors. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's what I did. I built a, um, uh, oh shoot, a Kiri Silas deck, and Silas oh, was yeah, there for Silas colors. Was for basically. colors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's a it's a four color Akiri deck. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
I, I do think, though, we mentioned that, like, we don't want to, like, build a deck and then pick a commander. But I, I, what we do do, and this is going to seem like a subtle difference, so I want to make sure I explain it well enough, is we often will have, like, a theme or card that we've wanted to build around. Mm. And then we find a commander that, like, it is good with or enables that strategy. Mm. But, we, but we build the deck after having picked the commander, right? So that we're not just, like... Yes. Pl- like... Like I think I built a jury, a jury um, master their view deck. I'll, can I read jury really quick? Please do. So uh, jury master their view is uh, black red for a one one legendary creature human shaman that says whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one plus one counter on jury master their view. When jury dies, it deals damage equals to its power to any target. Now jury I think is unique for w- me having wanting to build a an Arakdos aristocrats deck. Right. In fact, mm. it was because I was playing limited. And I yeah. had played Cube, and I had uh, Geese of the Hellraiser that creates two zombies whenever you commit, commit a crime, but only once each turn. And I had Goblin Bombardment, right? Mm, so cool. you get to... <laughs> uh, and I, but I'd also had, like, Gisa and Yogmoth or, like, Goblin Bombardment, Gisa, and, like, uh, just, and, like, uh, Ophiomancer. Like, it was a really cool Rakdos Aristocrats deck, and I thought, this is so cool. I would love to do this in Commander. And yeah. so I had those ideas, and Jury just happened to be, like, a generically very good Aristocrats commander that's, like, low mana value. Um, and so it, it felt like the right choice for my deck. But I, I didn't build the entire deck and then put Jury as the commander. I picked Jury mm. and then built a deck in that theme around still jury around that Jury. That included those things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I had the same thing with... With Brago, I saw the Displacer Kitten uh, Coveted Jewel combo. Yeah. And I was like, I need to build this deck. <laughs> I don't know who's going to be at the helm, but I really like this combo. I think it's really cool. And uh, so I looked around at different commanders. And I was actually, I think it was because I was de-sleeving a, the Kaldheim. Oh, the, yeah, the Spirit Squad. Or the, what's, what's his no, name? No, it's the Fertel, uh Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I want to say uh, Renarin, but that's the that's the character from Way of Kings. <laughs> that is the character from Way of Kings. It does um, it start with an R though? I don't know. I'm gonna say KLD. Is it a commander? ID, ID. Azorius. Uh, yeah, I literally just typed the I, same thing. I'm so scenario. derailed by this. That's is so legendary. Funny. Yeah. Anyone comment right now? You'll you'll will never know. Oh, it's not gonna be from Kaldheim because it's from Kaldheim Commander. Well, it's a, it's uh it's I know what you're talking about. Anyways, I was de-sleeving that deck and I saw Brago and I was like, ah, then it clicked and I was like, Brago cares about all these same things. This is a great this is a great Brago deck. And so mm. I built Brago around blinking artifacts. So that's that's where my Brago artifacts deck came from because I had like a concept that I wanted to build. I thought it'd be really cool to blink these artifacts and then I found a commander that that synergized with that. Yeah, I so I want to expand on that. It's Renar the Ever Watchful. Renar is, is Renard. very close. Renar it was is, so it is close. Renard. I'm sorry. I, I had to dig it up while you were talking for a second. <laughs> but I do want to expand on that because you did, like, you picked the, you saw Displacer Kitten and you had been watching, like, LSV Draft, right? And he did, like, the Displacer yeah. Kitten. It was on Cube. Uh, Everyone should play Jewel. Cube. It's a great place to come Cube up is, with deck ideas. <laughs> it's so cool because you get to do, it's, it's like Commander, but you get to, like, but you get to do busted stuff, like, all the time. Yeah. And everyone's yeah. trying to do busted stuff. It's really cool. Um, but you saw that combo, and I think it, that's a key difference, right? Is picking a handful of cards or, like, a, a handful of... Uh, yeah, a handful of cards or a specific synergy, and then picking a commander and then building a deck is different than saying, I want to play Aristocrats. Here's my yeah. Aristocrats deck. Who's the commander, right? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. because you you still get to build, a, like, around the commander to some degree. Okay, can we... Take a small sidebar here. Not that we haven't had a thousand sidebars already. Sure. But a small sidebar here to talk about alternate commanders. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, you just said, okay, I build a deck and I'm like, okay, who's the commander? And sometimes if you're running alternate commanders, it can feel like that where you like sit down and you're like, okay, I have my deck. Who's my commander this game? Mm-hmm. And, and I think this happens a lot with pre-cons where like pre-cons all have an alternate commander in them. They come yes. like Lord of Pain is Valgavoth's alternate commander. And so you sit down and you're like, you have it, you kind of have an option to run either either commander. So how do you feel about alternate commanders in commander decks? Yeah, you know what? Now that you point that out, tisk tisk, <laughs> wizards. You are encouraging <laughs> some bad practices, or at least practices oh. are gonna make people sad about their decks. Because I 
we've talked about this. We actually wanted to do an entire episode on Alternate Commanders. I don't think we have an entire episode's worth of content. If we talk for the next hour about Alternate Commanders, I will be surprised. <laughs> we should but, just cut it cut it out of this episode <laughs> and make it a separate episode. <laughs> okay, we're back. We talked about Alternate yeah. Commanders for an hour. It's a, it's a special episode we're going to release later. Um, no, I mean, so... I'll put a jump cut in there so it looks... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, um, I, uh, I've been talking about Tana Tavish a lot today. So I don't want to keep beating that drum, but I part of the re- where I landed on Tana Tevish was because I wanted to build a Jund deck. Like, I wanted to build Jund, and I didn't want to build Corvold, but I had Corvold, and I was like, oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> and I, and I, Slimefoot and Squee I had pulled from the March of the Machine, and I thought that was a really cool Jund commander. Mm. And I also been wanting to do Sapperlings for a long time. And so I was like, oh, Slimefoot and Squee would be cool because it's like kind of Sapperlings, but it's Jund. And originally I built it and called it Jund All-Stars. And it had... Yeah. It had all the good Jund commanders in it. Yes, exactly. So I had yeah. Slimefoot and Squee at the, at, the, at the helm. And then it had Tana Tevish. It had um, Prosh. It had Zeatora. It had Corvold, right? And I was like, this will be sweet. I'll build this awesome, like generically good Jund deck that plays all of these cool Jund legends. And I'll just like swap the commander for the games that I want to play. And what I found was that even though they're all really cool Jund commanders with cool strategies that are even, like, relatively similar strategies, that is just, like, full-on does not work. Because you mm. do, like, want to build around your commander in some way, right? Yeah. And I don't think that's true for all alternate commanders. Like, I think some there are some that are close enough that you could, like, put them in decks together and play them, right? But, like... Sure. I think we ran into this with, uh, we have a friend that built Zeatora, right? And he originally wanted to build like Thantis and he wanted to do spiders and then he turned it into a Zeatora deck and Zeatora does damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power and they were all spiders. So they're all like <laughs> one power spiders. Big toughness generally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so even though it was still like Jun Sacrifice and he was able to do like really cool stuff with it because like Zeatora is powerful and Jun Sacrifice is powerful. It just wasn't, um, it wasn't built around Zeatora. And so it's, it's. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Thumbs down for me on alternate commanders, I guess, is the yeah. TLDR of that. I don't really do it because if I'd rather be playing an alternate commander, I should just rebuild the deck with that as the commander. Yeah. I, I think sometimes where it's happened is if I if I have like one deck that I'm wanting to play and it's like the only deck I want to play for that night and maybe I've played and either I've won <laughs> with that deck or maybe the deck is doing really poorly, kind of one of the extremes, then I'll be like, okay, I'm just going to swap out the commander just for fun. Just because, like, I'm looking to, like, have a different casual experience. <laughs> sure. Like, time to switch it up because I want to see what we can do. Yeah. Okay. But, like, I, I have, like, an Azuri Claw of Progress deck, which is a 1-1 one, one counters deck. But actually, Azuri really just cares about small creatures. And yeah. he does the whole 1-1 one, one counters thing on his own. So it's actually, well, it has a lot of 1-1 one, one counter stuff in it. It really just cares about making lots of small tokens mm. uh, to turn on the strategy. And so sometimes I would play the Peer and Toothy uh, companions mm. as or partners w- as like an alternate commander and the deck's not really built to do that because it it just has a bunch of small creatures in it and so i'm gonna rebuild the deck as just pure and toothy because i think that sounds really fun and i'm gonna have to strip out all of that small creature stuff and then it's gonna work a lot better so and in general honestly with precons even though precons have alternate commanders there's a commander in each precon that i much prefer to play and i just yes. always play that commander <laughs> so yeah whether it's the main one or the alternate one yeah, I think, like, uh, the Bright Palm one is a good example. I think a ton of people... Yeah. Or, actually, no, I think a better example is the is the Party Time one. Like, oh, I think yeah. it's generally agreed upon that... Uh, n- uh, Burakos and, Burakos and Folk, Folk Hero. Hero. I was trying to think of the other one. Yeah. Nalise is the other yeah, one? Yeah, Nalise, I think, is the other Nalise. one. Nalise. Yeah, but the Burakos and, and Folk Hero is just, like, better. Right? Yeah, yeah, but the Bright Palm one that you brought up, like, Shalayan Halar is the alternate commander. Right. <laughs> that commander is... Awesome and totally busted. So I love playing Shalayan Hall. It's one of my they're one of my favorite commanders, and I don't know that I've ever I think I've played Bright Palm once as the commander in that deck. Yeah, I think um uh I okay, sorry, I was trying to remember an idea that I had and I put it aside because we were having this conversation. How do you feel if we're talking about alternate commanders, right? Yep. How would you feel about having alternate commanders technically in the deck, except okay. that it's not legal because it's not necessarily the it's not technically the color identity but you could just pick a legend out of the deck and use it as your commander and still oh, play do the like same a five 99. color deck and then right. you just like pick one of the legendary creatures out of the deck to run yeah or something like that like i was thinking of like marquesa right i think marquesa is sure. cool 
I think the reason I had built Marquesa, and I think I'm going to take Marquesa apart, actually. And there, because part of the reason I built Marquesa is because I wanted to do the um, Gisa stuff. And I think Jury Sorry. just does it better. Does and it I think, better. yeah, I think it's just cool. Uh, and so, uh, but I thought, hey, what if I like played Marquesa, but I just took Gisa out and put Gisa as the commander. Oh, and cool. Marquesa was in the 99. And so it was like sure. a Gisa Grixis crime I actually crime think that sounds totally rad. And that's a great rule zero conversation to have. Be like, hey, my, my deck has like, a bunch of different legendary creatures that I think are make really fun commanders, and I usually just pull one out. And it doesn't necessarily match the color identity of the whole deck, but uh, you know, can we rule zero that? And I think people would be fine with that. I, th- I think I don't think people would really care. At least in our play group. Yeah, it'd be interesting because care. technically you get like an advantage that you shouldn't in those like because then you could be like, cool, I'm playing green in whatever deck. <laughs> like this is my sure. this is my Grixis deck that also you're, plays green. But you're also acting like mono color isn't a very synergistic advantage. Yeah, true. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, anyways, I uh, yeah. I, I think that could be fun, a fun way to play. Long story short though, we just kind of avoid uh alternate commanders because ultimately, like you do want some commander dependence in your deck, right? Yeah. Because again, it, it, your deck might synergize with itself and you might have redundancy for your commander's effect, but like ultimately your commander is going to be like the best at doing whatever thing you want to do and you always have access to it. And so yeah. like inherently you do want some of that, that commander dependence. This is something I would love to hear in the comments. If if you have an alternate commander that works really well with your deck that you love to play, yes. please tell us because I'd love to know what it is. I was like thinking through my decks. I was like thinking through my decks and I was like, well, I have like, Tatiova and AC, <laughs> but right. those are like the same card, so it doesn't really. Okay, yeah, it, sure. <laughs> yeah, of course it'd be a good alternative <laughs> commander. It's practically the same. So yeah. I, I'd really love to know, like, where is the line between like having an alter, alternate commander that offers a different enough play experience, mm. but also synergizes well enough with your deck to be an actual alternate commander. So obviously we don't have a ton of experience with this. We don't have a ton of thoughts on this. So we'd really love to hear, I guess we have a ton of thoughts. We just, we yeah, just have a ton, ton, of, ton of thoughts, but not a lot of positive, positive, <laughs> positive experiences yeah. with it. So, so if you do have a good alternate commander, please share. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody, thank you so much for listening. Well, uh, we hope no one walked away with a bad taste in their mouth from this one. <laughs> We're not trying to diss on alternate commanders or diss on decks that are piles. good stuff piles or decks that are too commander dependent. I think they're all that ways to play. I think where we've landed is that we just are trying to avoid good stuff piles because we're playing just a ton of mid power these days. I think that's where our play group yeah, is at. Very and casual. So yeah, exactly. And so we're getting rid of the good stuff piles, trying to make things more thematic, and also trying to make people not have dead games with com- with commander decks that are very thematic. So, again, totally. if you've got cool alternate commanders, if you have decks that you feel like are uh, cool and, and or thoughts about how uh, you might make a deck perform well while not being too commander dependent, please let us know. Uh, you can send us an email. We've been getting emails from you guys from tr- on deck list recommendations for the next uh, recommendations for the next deck doctors. We're very excited about that. Um, yeah, thank you for we'll, the great response. Yeah, we're still figuring out how we're going to do that. So please, like, bear with <laughs> us. We're not we're not sure that's going to happen in the short term or how we're going to even like choose what decks to do. Um, I th- we we may do that as like a as like a, a a Patreon thing at some point. We don't even know where we're going with that, but we would like to do that maybe at some point in the future. So just please bear with us as we figure the logistics of that out. Um, but thank you for the engagement. It means so much. Every time I see an email come in, uh, it's it makes me so happy. It's show at the commanderpod.com. So please keep sending me emails. Like I love it. It's us awesome. emails. Yep. Us emails. They just happen to go to my email. They just happen to go to you right <laughs> now. Yeah. So please like and subscribe to get notified of our weekly commander content. And until next time, remember to always pay the one.